Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Why Pod, where we highlight everyday Wyoming leaders. Excited to share a conversation today with Jim Creel, CEO of Taco John's. We get to hear some fascinating stories about Taco John's history, how Jim thinks about the organization and moving them even further into the future, and also some of the things Jim really loves about Wyoming. I hope you enjoy watching it, even a fraction as much as we enjoyed recording it. Let's get right to it. Here's Jim Creel. You originally came from Casper. Yeah, born and raised in Casper, Wyoming, um, and and love Casper to this day. Uh, never would have left if we had a choice, but um, things happen in life, and so we ended up in Cheyenne eventually. But yeah, I grew up in Casper. Um, the the town, the people. Uh, it, you know, it's uh, it's a different place than Cheyenne. Cheyenne has. Uh, reliance sometimes on Fort Collins and Denver and Casper you rely on yourself up there so um, that was a it was a great place to grow up a uh, great place to meet my wife um, of now over 39 years so uh, a lot of fond memories of Casper congratulations yeah. 39 years and when you grew up in Casper uh, we were talking before we started the record that you didn't come from a background of a long line of CEOs and business magnates, and you didn't start off in the mail room. Could you tell us a little bit about your path? Sure. Um, my dad was a truck driver, had a trucking company, and uh, my mom kept his books, was, was a secretary. And um, when, when I was 10, he was killed in a chariot race at Cheyenne Frontier Days. And so immediately I got a job. Uh, we, were, we were fairly poor in, uh, when I was growing up. And uh, one of the jobs I had was working for Carl Underwood with Truck Equipment Company, and uh, he sent a crew of us to Gillette, Wyoming, for a summer to scrape grease off of oil rigs. We did that 12 hours a day, um, $1.65 an hour. I, I thought it was great money. Um, it was cool to be 13 and living in a motel for a while, but at the end of that, I decided that uh, I was going to go to college, and nothing was going to get in my way um, that I was... And I needed to do something more uh, in life. So uh, math was easy, so I took accounting, uh, became a CPA with McGladry. Uh, about three years into it, uh, I knew that doing uh, numbers every day, all day long, was not my deal. Uh, I liked people too much. And uh, so I got in with the consulting side of the business and uh, did a lot of IT consulting because uh, back then it was floppy disks were, and a five, five megabyte hard drive was a big deal back then. So I uh, got in on the ground floor of that uh, and did HR and, and IT and uh, worked there for 20 years. And one day uh, uh, the CFO from Taco John's called me and asked me if I knew of anybody who would want to take over their IT operations. And I told him no, and uh, he called back a couple of days later and said, okay, have you ever thought about leaving McGladry? Um, and I said, well, make me an offer. Um, and the last part of the offer was you don't have to wear a tie. And so um, 20 years of white shirt and tie uh, sounded pretty good. So I made the move over to Taco John's uh, doing IT, and they figured out I knew a little bit about accounting. And so next thing I know, I was vice president of finance and accounting and uh, or IT, and then uh, became the CFO, and then uh, when the opportunity came up, uh, I became a CEO. So it's been an interesting path, but uh, one I wouldn't change for the world. You said a moment or two ago the idea that you enjoy people too much. Yes. And what folks uh, are seeing on their screen right now is this idea of, of family, um, because it's kind of woven throughout the materials uh, about Taco John's. Did you know it was going to have that feel when you came in, or, or did that take you at all by surprise? It, it took me by surprise. I, I did not know that uh, it was that. They were a client, uh, so I'd, I'd help them with their IT needs occasionally, um, but really didn't know much about the company, even though I grew up in Wyoming. I think a lot of people are like that. They really, I didn't even know Taco John's just started in Wyoming. I just ate there as a kid in Casper. Um, so, yeah, I, I had no idea, but uh, once I got here, and saw all of the people who'd been here 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, um, you got to know that the culture was something special. Um, and a lot of companies say that, 
and uh, when they're recruiting, uh, they didn't even mention it, uh, which was interesting to me. Uh, but when I got here, it, it was truly a, a unique experience. And it must have been enjoyable for you too, because you've stayed. Oh yeah, I, you know, after about two weeks, I couldn't imagine working anywhere else. Um, and the, the people have been great. And some of the people that were here when I started are still here, and they had been here long before I started. So, uh, you know, they, they become f friends and family uh, at that point. People who aren't familiar with Taco John's, or maybe they're just familiar with the food or the restaurants or, or the signs, there's so many stories behind the organizations. Yes. Um, the idea of John, because there was a Taco John. There was, uh, John Turner. Um, he, he had the idea and the recipes uh, for the taco meat, um, and he came to, originally to Mr. Woodson, um, to build a, a building, or to find him a place for a building. And so uh, Mr. Woodson talked to Mr. Holmes about building him a trailer, because Mr. Holmes was in that business. And so they got together, and um, they, they both liked the food, and um, John uh, wanted to expand, didn't really have the, the backing to expand, so he brought in Mr. Woodson and Mr. Holmes, and uh, you know they had a little bit of funding to help him get going, and, and it, it took off. And uh, the, the stories of them getting in Mr. Holmes' airplane, and they would just fly to Nebraska or South Dakota, uh, and look for towns, and they'd find one, they'd land. Uh, Mr. Woodson would go looking for real estate for where the, maybe they could put a Taco John's, and Mr. Holmes would go looking for a businessman uh, in the early days. And that's how they, they got the thing off the ground. And uh, they'd build these uh, trailers and haul them out to the site, set them up. Uh, training was a little sketchy back then, uh, probably not, not to the same extent we have it today. but. They got people going in business, and uh, it's amazing to see how many of those people have done the same thing now for somebody in their organization. They've helped them get their own store and, and continue that, that legacy and that culture of family. Uh, and it is one of the, the things that runs through a lot of the history of the organization, the idea that they were growing a business, but it seemed to me as an outsider that they also paid a lot of attention to they were they were building a family, they were building a, a group of people who believed in similar types of things. Very much so, um, and, and I can still remember uh, any time you'd see Mr. Holmes or Mr. Woodson in the office, they'd ask about your family first, um, tell you good morning, but they always ask about your family, and then if they had a business question, they'd talk to you about that, but the family was the very first thing that uh, was on their minds, and, and they treated you um, very well. I mean, unlike any, and I've had some great bosses um, in my in my lifetime, but uh, these two were, were something special. And for anyone who who does any research online about you guys or looks into your history at all, there there's some amazing older photos, even yes. midterm recent photos. Um, the hottest spot in town is what people will see in front of them right now. As you look back on what came before you and what you now are, in a way, you're kind of the caretaker. Um, how, did, how do you react when you see these old photos, old buildings, the founders? You know, it, it, the, when I look at the old buildings, it just amazes me that it's come to where it is today. Um, when you look at our new building out on South Greeley Highway, it's so different from uh, what, we, what we started with. Uh, those those original 12 by 30 trailers um, were very hot inside. Air, air conditioning was very poor. Uh, I don't know how people survived in there. Uh, truly, uh, cooking in those kitchens had to just be brutal. Uh, but they did it. They loved it. Um, and they were almost always that person that was their business. Um, that They bought themselves a job when they bought a, a franchise back in those days. Um, and then they would slowly expand um, to where they maybe didn't have to work in the restaurant every day, but um, that's where every every one of the early franchisees started in those buildings. And so to, to go from there to adding a drive-through, and that was back in the days when drive-throughs weren't a big thing. Um, it was kind of an experimental thing that they, they did, adding that drive-through on, but it worked. Um, and then dining rooms came into, uh, into play, 
and, and evolved into the, the giant buildings that we have today. So from a 12 by 30 trailer to, to these 2,500 square foot buildings, is, uh, it's been a journey. And looking at the evolution of different buildings in the quote, the idea that you know, it's the ugliest building in town yes. compared to what you build now, um, it, for you in your role, there's so many details that go into uh, this organization, both at a macro level and a micro level. How do you decide what you pay attention to and what you don't and how deeply you go into something and how cursory level you stay? You know, I, th I think it comes down to hiring good people. Um, and so I, I try to stay at the 30,000 foot level and uh, and not get down into the details. And but I can tell you my people appreciate that because when I get in the details, it things get all messed up. So I, I, I kind of stay out of the details and, and try to look at the big picture of where are we today? Where do we need to go? What do we need to do to stand out in the, in, in the maze of restaurant choices out there today? And so I think when you look at some of the changes in our newest building, those are designed to really catch your eye. They're a lot brighter than they were, a little more colorful. We're trying to, to bring in that younger crowd and, and, and differentiate ourselves a little bit. Especially in commoditization-based market and mass market, that idea that you're trying to differentiate yourself uh, over the years, I was fascinated to see some of the ways that, that Taco John's differentiated itself. One of them that I had never heard about, but I'm sure a lot of people have, uh, there was a, a comic strip that the organization yes. had. Was that something you were even aware of before you joined the organization, or? I, I was not aware of the, the comic strip. And a matter of fact, it was probably, I had been here 10 years before I found out about the comic strips. It was during our 40th um, anniversary celebration that we had, and we had some people going through archives and they found these. Um, and some of the people here had been around when they, when they did them, but they found these cartoons and they were, today they might not, might be a little irreverent, but back in that day, they were just fun and um, they, they went in the company newsletters and people loved them. It, it, was, uh, it was interesting that the owners would take the time to, to go to that level of detail because when you look at the drawings, somebody with some talent was involved in, in doing that and somebody really had to think up those storylines. Um, and, and yet our business was food, but, but that little detail of making sure that the company newsletter at that time had something in there fun for the franchisees was, uh, was pretty interesting. It's an interesting side note for a couple of reasons. One, you and I were looking at, at some of the photos, and there's a photo of employees in uniforms. Yes. And they're, before going to the point about what you were just making in terms of engaging employees in the company, you had mentioned something about these uniforms that people probably wouldn't know. The, the early uniforms were red and yellow, um, kind of like the ugliest building in town was red and yellow at that time, and they were made of polyester. And so they were extremely hot inside those trailers with, with poor air conditioning. Um, and actually, they, they did finally listen to the employees and get rid of the uh, polyester uniforms, but... Those were around for quite a while before they uh, they were able to get rid of them. Probably not a big sales pitch today if you're trying to hire someone and all our uniforms are polyester. Yeah, and they're red and yellow. <laughs> How'd you like to wear that? Yeah, we changed it a little bit there. I would imagine so. The the point that you mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, and thanks for taking the side trip with me on polyester, is the idea of, of doing things for your employees internally, like marketing it's typically thought of as an external function, and you guys obviously do a lot of very good, very creative marketing externally. What are some of the things you pay attention to at your level in terms of the messaging that's done to internal employees, how you want those employees to feel about being a part of Taco John's? You know, we, we really want those employees to know that we care about them, and, and we truly do. Again, I think a lot of companies say that, um, but I don't know that they, they really follow through with that um, the way that we do. And, um, uh, when you look at our benefit packages, they're far better than most, most companies in town. Um, and we listen to our employees. We get ideas from our employees. They, you know, they're on the ground every day. They know what's going on out there. Um, so it, it's, they're almost like family again. Um, and 
and we, we care for each other greatly. Um, it, it actually ties into another piece of history that I'm curious how, how it relates to how you think about business today. Because when the founders were recruiting people into the business, uh, as you say, they, they would try to find people in the right geography, but they were also trying to find the right kind of people. And they went to links with those people to support them in their business that normally would be reserved for someone who's family. Um, how does that relate to, in the modern world, we hear phrases like, it's just business, it's nothing personal. How does that mentality that they had of how they do business, how does that flow forward into today and the way you think? You know, one of the, one of the things that I'll tell you, we, we've had some newer franchisees that maybe are with a, a larger uh, franchise organization come in. And the first thing that I do when I meet with them is give my cell phone number. And they can't understand why I would do that because nobody in any other franchises they're involved with does that. And I told them, you know, my phone's on 24-7. And if you need anything, you, you can always call me. And so, you know, they think I'd be flooded with calls. Well, I'm not. People are respectful of that. But when they do need something, the franchisees do call, and they and they know that I'm going to pick up the phone and answer. If I can't answer, they know I'm going to call them back. Um, so it's the same way that I think Jim and Harold started out supporting the franchisees. Um, they would sign banknotes uh, without the franchisee knowing. They would they would co-sign on a note to get a franchisee going. Um, and so we we try to continue that spirit uh, with our franchisees today. It. It's an amazing thing, and we were talking about it before uh, we started the recording. When you you come across an organization that espouses certain values, but then you get behind the scenes and they actually live those values as well, it shouldn't be surprising. But I maybe I've become too cynical uh, that it still is surprising and refreshing when you see that. Yeah, I, you know I think too many companies use it as a marketing ploy um, to for customers as well as employees. Um, but like you say, when you get behind the scenes, it, it doesn't always pan out the way that it appears. We probably don't do as much of the bragging about it as a lot of companies do. Um, it's much more important to us that once you get here, you, you feel it um, and, and you really know that. I was listening to something the other day and, and the author of a book said, uh, when you leave an organization or you look back on your career, you may not remember what you did, you may not remember the accomplishments, but you'll remember how you felt when you were there, and you'll remember if you were proud of having worked there. It sounds like he'd fit nicely inside Taco John's. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there to wear a few more years, and, and uh, it'll be time for me to move on, but I'm proud of what, I'm, what I've done since I've been here. So there were two other things on Taco John's that are definitely unique to Taco John's, even though people might not be aware of how unique they are. One of them is a product that our family, it's a favorite of. And you had shared a story about what went into making this product. The potato away. And I, I've had a lot of friends since I moved to Cheyenne who actually worked for Mr. Holmes building trailers. And back in the early days of the potato away, the, the chefs would make up a new product and they'd bring a whole tray of it over to these construction guys and have them try it. And sometimes they'd put meat in it and it would have boiling hot grease in it. And when they'd bite into it, it would burn their mouths. Um, so it, it took a long time to evolve to where it is. And there were some out there that had refried beans in them um, commercially. We, we had those. Um, some had meat in them over the years. But again, the insides were hot. Fortunately, Back in those days, you didn't get sued for everything that happened. Um, people just burned their mouth, and they, they went on about their business. So um, they eventually quit trying to put uh, fillings in them and, uh, and developed the potato lay as it is today. And what's really interesting is they, they sent Mr. Woodson's son to Denver to work with a spice company down there to develop the seasoning for the Olays, and, uh, and it was, it's called All-American Seasonings. They're still our vendor today for all of our seasonings, and it's a family-owned business just like this. Um, it's about 50, 60 years old, um, but that's how it started, and that family now um, really is part of our family. Uh, so the family thing ties back in again, but, but the potato lays. That's the first thing people think of when they think of Taco John's. It's iconic in, it is in iconic. many ways. Yes. The, the innovation that you're involved in as a, a chain, 
experimenting with new recipes, new flavors, new ideas, even outside of food. Um, is this another situation where you try to stay at 30,000 feet, or do you sometimes get pulled into it just because you get excited about ideas? Yeah, I, I, sometimes I think I'm a chef, so of course I have to give them my ideas. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to get a little more involved in the innovation um, side of it. Uh, and, you know, when we did our new uh, logo and, and the new building and stuff, I, I was very involved in that just because that was a, a passion of mine to uh, to make that change. So, but. Next week in Minneapolis, uh, we're going to have some tastings of some new products, and I'm going to be there for that. Perk of the job. The, the perk of the job. The other thing that is so uniquely Taco John's that I think most people, even those of us who live in Wyoming, aren't even aware of it, uh, is perhaps one of the greatest marketing phrases ever, because so many people use it and they have no idea that it actually came from Wyoming. Right. Taco Tuesday. And Taco Tuesday actually started out as it was two crispy tacos for 99 cents, so it was Taco Tuesday, T-W-O. Um, and eventually, as they went to trademark that, they, the attorneys convinced them to make it Taco Tuesday the, the regular way. But nobody really knew that Taco John's had that trademark um, and still maintains that trademark today. Uh, and, and when you think of Taco Tuesday, you think of Taco John's. The last thing that I was going to ask you about in terms of Taco John's itself is uh, there was a quote in, in the Taco John's historic book about how the founders never expected that Taco John's would get anywhere close to the size that it got even while they were with the organization. Um, when you think about the growth of the organization, and part of your job, obviously, sitting in your chair is looking out into the future. What are one or two things you're really excited about when you think about the path forward? So when, when I look, look at the path forward, I, I look at our whole organization. And over the last two years, we've really brought in a lot of industry professionals on our board, which will help us um, be better in the industry. Uh, we've also started to hire um, some people at a higher, higher level. Uh, we're opening the office in Minneapolis t so that we're a little bit closer to half of the chain. Within six hours of Minneapolis is 200 stores. Trying to service that out of, out of Cheyenne, is, it's a challenge. Um, just to drive to Denver is a challenge anymore. So, you know, w as we look at that, we want to continue to expand, and, and that's the way that, that we can expand quicker is to get these professionals on board with us to have an office, a uh, satellite office in Minneapolis. But knowing that Wyoming is our home, um, the shareholders have no intention of ever not being located in Wyoming, not being headquartered in Wyoming. So um, we're going to continue to be a Wyoming company. Um, we're going we're to continue to try to grow. And, and right now we've got some, some great opportunities ahead of us. Perfect lead in. You should be a professional with this, professional podcast guest. Okay. Perfect lead in for uh, final question. Uh, and that is, you could personally, given what you've accomplished professionally in your career and how you carry yourself, uh, I'm sure other opportunities have come up. Um, and some of those opportunities would have been outside Wyoming. You've talked a little bit about why you stay with Taco John's. Um, maybe why Wyoming? As you're doing all these expansions, you could relocate to Minneapolis? I, I, I could. But I, I've chosen not to. Even even early on in my career with McGladry, I had the opportunity to move to Minneapolis or South Carolina or Denver or Las Vegas, and those all sounded great. And the last thing on the list was Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, and so my wife and I, and she's a Wyoming girl, said, you know what, let's go to Cheyenne. And so we made that choice then, and, and we continue to make that choice today. We've raised our boys here. Um, our grandkids are here. Um, they're just... Wyoming is such a wonderful place that um, I, I just can't imagine not being here. If you had to say to someone who's never been to Wyoming, or maybe they've been to a part of Wyoming that is more tourist-related, so they haven't had the Wyoming experience, how would you describe what it is about Wyoming that you appreciate? You, you know, it's truly the people. Um, they're a different class of people. They're all just friendly. They're good-hearted people. I think you find in our communities the level of giving um, is second to none. Uh, and you have space here uh, where 
your neighbor's not right on top of you. Uh, the skies are blue 300 days a year. Um, the sun shines. The snow comes, and it's gone in a couple of days. And there's a little wind occasionally, but that aside, the rest of the time, it, it's just uh, it, it's like a, a paradise that nobody knows about. Um, and, and I hope they never find out about um, we, we want a few more people to come to the state, but we'd like them to visit maybe and go away. Um, Denver, uh, Fort Collins, when you go down there, the, the traffic, the, the people don't smile. When, when you walk down the street in Cheyenne or Casper, people smile at you. And that's, you know, there's something to be said for that. Well, thanks for everything. We didn't even get into community aspects, but Taco John's is incredibly involved in the community. Um, and that takes a leadership commitment as well uh, to make that happen. So thanks for everything you do for the community um, and how much you care about the lives that are impacted. You, you run an organization with a lot of employees and you run it a certain way. Um, thanks for everything you do for them too. Thank you, appreciate that.